Right then, I suppose we should mention the CMD instruction. This guy is kind of similar to run, in that it executes commands, but it's very different too. First up, CMD only executes at runtime, so when we launch a container. Run, on the other hand, is a build time instruction. Like we've seen already, run instructions are commands that we run to build our images and add layers to them. And you know what? More often than not, they're used for exactly what we've been using them for, to install apps to images. So, apt get install, yum install, stuff like that. CMD, on the other hand, the way we've been using it so far, runs a command inside of our container when it's launched. We've already done a few where we've echoed hello world to the screen, and in fact we just did one where the CMD instruction fired up our Apache web server. In that sense, it's the equivalent of the command that we can slap onto the end of the docker run command. You know the one, we've done a million of them so far, mainly bin bash so far in our simple examples. But we have said throughout the course, it's more commonly used to start real applications on PID1 inside of a container. So, Apache, MongoDB, Redis, yeah? And note this as well, if we specify a command at runtime on the docker run command, this overrides any CMD instruction we've got in the docker file. Now there's a couple more things about CMD. First up, there can only be one CMD instruction per docker file. I guess we could put more in, but if we do, only the last one will be effective. The other thing about CMD isn't so simple, and I'm going to park it for now and not mention it until we talk about the entry point instruction in the next clip. But before we go there, let me just mention the style of syntax that we've been using with CMD. So the CMD instruction takes two forms, or two styles of input. Either shell form, or exec form. Shell form takes the commands, arguments, variables, everything that we give it, and treats them in exactly the same way that they'd be treated by the shell itself. And in fact, behind the scenes, if we specify arguments to the run instruction in shell form, they get automatically prepended with bin sh minus c. So we could go echo hello world, and we'd end up with containers that printed hello world to the screen every time they started. In fact, that'd be all they'd do, because remember, containers exit as soon as the process they run exits. Anyway, we could also do cmd echo and then var1, meaning, okay, variables get expanded just as they do with the shell. Now, obviously, in this example, we'd need to have passed a variable called var1, and we will see how to do that shortly. But that's shell form. We get all the coolness of the shell. The other form is exec form that we've been using, where we pass arguments to CMD formatted like a JSON array. So a comma separated list of values, each value enclosed in double quotes, and everything wrapped in a set of square brackets. And this seems to be the recommended method. Firstly, it allows commands to be executed inside of containers that don't have a shell. And secondly, it avoids any potential string munging by the shell. On the downside though, we don't get any of the goodness of the shell, so no variable expansion, and we can't use special shell characters. Well, we can use them obviously, but they won't have any special powers like they do in the shell. So that's shell form and exec form. In my mind, right, they both work. I go with exec form unless I specifically need the shell form. Anyway, Next up, let's go take a look at the entry point instruction.